A troublesome paradox lies at the core of the world of philanthropy. Many philanthropists amass their fortunes by setting goals, mapping strategies, managing processes, earning solid returns. That's what enabled them to become donors in the first place. But why do many of these same donors have disappointing returns on their philanthropic projects? Most often the reason is vague goals or strategies, a lack of metrics, too little measurement and accountability. Philanthropy could use better advice. Introducing LPs. LPs is a team of world-class advisors that helps individuals, nonprofits, and corporate philanthropists design and implement successful programs. LPs means hope in Greek, and hope is at the emotional heart of philanthropy. But LPs knows that successful philanthropy needs more than hope. It needs professional expertise. That's what LPs adds to the equation. How does LPs do it? With three powerful tools metrics and measurement, accountability, and transparency. LPs develops metrics, standards of measurement to gauge performance, progress, and quality. Because if you can't measure something, you can't manage it. LPs establishes accountability, assigning specific roles and tasks, so team members know their jobs and take responsibility for them. LPs enforces transparency, the clarity, accessibility, and disclosure that every good program needs. Every LP's project has built-in measurement and accountability tools, so investors can follow progress in real time for real success. The goal is grant making in Greece, education in Egypt, or a bridge in Borneo. LP's is here for you to turn paradox into performance. LP's, do good wisely. I'm not an expert. Uh, I think we have here the best experts to analyze what exactly is creative economy, because there are many meanings for creative economy, and that's one of the problems we believe. In Greece, we have in the past very organized and very nice efforts on the topics of creative economy, and we hope that this today will be an event that will create a, a larger dialogue of what creative economy is and what it can do for Greece. As you may have read or know, creative economy, if uh, it were a single economy, would be the fourth largest economy in the world. Uh, and this is a fantastic opportunity for Greece as well. In Greece, as far as we can measure, uh, creative economy contributes maybe 3 to 7 percent of the annual GDP. And some numbers uh, um, uh, to give you a sense, uh, uh, creative economy in, uh, in Europe, in the European Union, uh, is uh, approximately 4.4% of the European Union GDP. Uh, that translates in about 13 billion euros. An equivalent amount is, of course, uh, uh, for the United States and the rest of the world, more than 600 billion uh, dollars. And recently, there is set up uh, institutional funds in Europe, Creative Europe, with 120 million available for creative economies in Europe. Uh, some examples uh, that we can uh, give, but uh, not uh, everybody can uh, relate them to creative economies. For example, gastronomy is a component of creative economy. Fashion that we will hear more today. Uh, the circus. I don't know if you attended the Cirque du Soleil recently in Athens in Thessaloniki, uh, with over 5,000 uh, staff members and performers around the world, and a budget of over 800 million uh, dollars annually. So, to give you a sense of how important this sector is, and sometimes it's overlooked, we believe strongly that uh, creative economy is an umbrella of ideas ideas that uh, should be and can be creative, but uh, also need an enabling environment. And that's why LPs 
uh, is associated with uh, this project today, this event, and with the notion of the creative economy. Because uh, we strongly believe that private funding and philanthropic funding could really provide for this enabling environment, provide for the unnecessary education for creativity to grow, the necessary protection of intellectual property rights, the necessary access to working in human capital, and even most importantly, to loan facilities for creative industries and economies in Greece and around the world. So without further ado, uh, I would like to thank on behalf of the Board of LPs, our board members, Anita Petropoulou and Sam Zakar. As I said previously, Faye Kujuku, Sarah Lee Bentley and Angelos Kakavas from LPs and Elena Mavromichali, Alexa Dustanas, and Natalia Katifori with the wonderful uh, team uh, with Opus Communications, our volunteers today, and of course the Acropolis Museum for their hospitality. And uh, uh, a special thanks to my daughter, Anita, who is uh, gracious enough to join us today. And Anitaki, μου δώσες μεγάλη χαρά και εύχομαι στη ζωή σου να είσαι πολύ δημιουργική. So I hope uh, that she is creative. We are all creative. Please have a very creative day. And it's my very pleasure and uh, honor to introduce Fel Felipe Pudrago, who has been 11 years associated uh, with the International Development Bank and uh, is the co-author of the book I mentioned, The Orange Economy, An Infinite Opportunity. So Felipe, please. Thank you. <laughs>